What's up guys? Today we're going to be making the Eye of Agamotto from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's actually Doctor Strange's necklace thing that he uses to, you know, control time and stuff. Now first thing we're going to have to do is just cut down these pine 2x4s into manageable slices that, you know, we can carve up really easily. Also, you know, just like don't leave your wood in the rain. That's also helpful. After that, we can just choose one piece of wood that we're going to use for the eye. Then I just printed out a template that was kind of the same size, you know, it doesn't really have to be exact, and I just cut it out and traced the rough shape of the necklace thing, I don't really know what to call it, onto the wood. Yeah, you might notice the sewing thing's going incredibly fast. Yeah, no, it didn't. You know, it took a very long time. But you know, we can just movie magic that stuff down from 30 minutes down to 30 seconds, because that's how we do it. Anyways, now that we have the shape cut out, we can just clean up the edges with a Dremel. I use some tungsten carbide burrs just to rough out the shape. And then, you know, I also just forgot to focus the camera this time as well. Now we just gotta sand down the rough edges from the Dremel with some sandpaper. I even wrapped sandpaper on a soda can just to use as like a sanding block. Also, if you're bored at home like me, you know, 90% of the day, going outside is a bad idea, you know, stay home, but you know, don't stay home all the time. I went outside, I took a walk, I, st I stayed far away from everyone, you know, be responsible. I also found this cool bird. <laughs> I also need to carve out a round cavity like in the model, so I just traced out a circle to carve into. Then we just travel back to the trusty rotary carver and forget to focus the camera for a second time. Now that it's all carved out with the drum, we can just sand the cavity down until it's, you know, it's nice and smooth. Then we can cut the inside parts of the eye out of basswood with a coping saw just because, you know, it's easy to get those, those nice rounded edges. Now we can just sand those pieces down too. Now I'm just drawing this line here so that when I file down the edges of the eye, I have a guide to file down to and make sure that all the edges are symmetrical and look the same and smooth. So the strategy when filing an edge is just to eliminate as many sharp lines as you can and make it a rounded surface as much as possible. After around half an hour of sanding all the edges down, you should get something like this. Maybe, you know, we can just go over it with another sand just to like make it as smooth as possible. Then, you know, we flip it over and do the other side. Then, you know, more sanding. So now we can just focus on adding the other details that we have to add. My plan was to basically carve this top surface separate from the others and then glue it to the eye. Since making it out of just one piece is just generally more complicated and I thought this would look better. And it did, so I was right. 
After tracing it, we can just, you know, cut that thing out. Yeah, I also forgot to record me sanding down and sketching the details under the circle, but I mean, yeah, it wasn't too complicated. It was kind of everything that happened here. So I used a different bit on the rotary carver to drill into the circle, and then I can saw out the little details with a coping saw, and then, you know, more sanding. Hey you! Yeah, you. Are you mildly irritated that Craftsman Studios can only put out a single video every few months despite his relatively lax schedule, and even when he does, they're quite mediocre? Well, now you don't have to be, since Craftsman Studios is now going to be live streaming as well. Yes, that's right, folks. He's going to start producing more content for you to watch on a somewhat weekly basis. Yup, this is not a prank. These videos just take way too long to make. Anyways, back to the video. I also added in a little indent to the circle to get, you know, give it more definition and make it more film accurate. I was sanding down the circle, like, design thing, and I ended up breaking part of it, but I just replaced it back with another piece of wood. You know, I'm kind of proud of it. You can't really even see it in the final piece, which is cool. For places where I attached wood to wood, I literally just used Elmer's glue, because wood glue takes a little bit too long to set in my opinion. Then you know, I just uh, I just copy the designs from an image on Google, and I just sketch them onto the piece with a pencil. I use various Dremel cutting wheels to get the details in, and dude, the burn marks actually look so cool. But I wasn't able to get the little details to burn, so I ended up just filling in the remaining details in with brown paint just to make it look consistent. I also tested out different types of green for the time stone, and I eventually just picked light green because it was the closest to an image I found on Google. Oh yeah, also, so when I painted in the brown into the details, I definitely covered the piece in paint everywhere, even in the places where I wasn't supposed to get brown. However, I knew this was gonna be okay because I was gonna sand down the top surface anyway, so whatever paint was left would be just be in the grooves, which was kind of what I intended in the first place. I also slapped a coat of Mod Podge onto the painting parts, you know, almost as lacquer. All I had to do after that was just glue the uh, top circle design thing to the actual body of the piece. And then after that we could just attach the felt cord to the necklace just to, you know, complete the whole image. And now, finished product time!
Yeah, cool. Yeah, so you guys heard it right. We are going to be trying live streaming. You know, we'll just give it a try. It might not pan out, but you know, we'll see. So yeah, I mean, thanks a lot guys for watching and see you guys next time.